Hi, and welcome to Two Tired Teachers. So, Mylena, you ready to hit the road? It's spring, it's warm, and you're making a three-day weekend for yourself. Well, actually, no, I've got a day off, so we are taking a short trip and realized we had not made a video that takes you from what do we do before we go until we get back. So, let's make that big overview video yes. of a trip. But Sharon, you know what? We have short videos of each of these. Oh, some of them we've gone on. <laughs> and on. But we do. And throughout this video, you're going to see thumbnails like this one that tells you we have a complete RV playlist. And when you see those thumbnails, that lets you know that if you look down in the description, there's going to be a link to that video that gives you more detail about yes. that specific part. So this is that for the people who aren't sure is RVing for me, we're going to kind of give you that big overview of a trip and then for those of you who are... Maybe one part's not clear to you. This you, is going to be relatively not that detailed. You can click on the link to the part that's exactly what you need. And get our take on that. So... The night before we leave, or maybe two nights, I like to be sure to turn the refrigerator on. Two ways we can do this. One is by using, plugging into the electricity here and into a cord in my garage. Or the other is to run it on propane. This is essential in Texas in the summer. You want it to have overnight to cool before you put your food stuff in there. Okay. A couple of things that I do uh, the night before to try and speed the process of getting on the road the next morning. Um, I have this little chest thing that I got at Walmart and I have a bunch of empty gallon jugs that I fill up with water from home for the dogs and we do have a video about traveling with dogs where we mention some things like that but get that done. And then the other thing is um, just a little bit of kind of I don't even think you call it maintenance, but just to kind of help get the hitch ready. There's really nothing to this other than um, I simply take a dry paper towel and I'm going to wipe down the rails of the hitch. Now, I do have an entire video devoted to um, the hitch. And this time we've had a lot of rain. I do keep a cover on here, but because we're traveling, I wasn't so... Um, Okay, now what I'm going to do is take some uh, liquid wrench. I'm going to spray this on both of these. And this will work to some extent. I'm trying to do this one-handed here. Um, I'm going to move this a couple of times. Now... I am going to, because it was so dirty, I'm going to wipe it down again and then I'll spray it so it'll be ready to travel. Okay, one other thing, and we made a quick tip about this, but just one, yes, sweetheart, want to mention it. Um, we pack a pillowcase, and the great thing about this is we get here, put all the clothes away, and have an automatic dirty clothes bag as we use them. They get dirty, we put them in the bag. You get home, simply take all your clothes, dump them in the washing machine with the bag, and you're good to go. The other nice thing is, you get a matching set of luggage when you buy. Before you leave, start to travel, you need to verify that everything inside and outside is ready to travel. Have stuff off the counters, be sure your refrigerator is set, ours is three ways, so we don't have to have anything on right now. It'll pick up 
from the battery. And that's why the light was showing is because we didn't have it connected to the truck yet. Sorry about the quality here. The lights weren't on, but you also want to make sure your ceiling fans off. We have video about this and that things are off the counter. And we, we do have some oops where we've forgotten these things. That's why we're telling you, check every bay door. Make sure that it's latched securely. Make sure your steps are in. Make sure your door is locked. Make, make sure, sure that the, the handle hand is in. One quick tip. Um, because I, it's on her driveway, this part is at a much steeper angle than the rest of the driveway. So when I get home, I do not try and level it. I leave it where it's just about an inch or so um, so that whenever I start to back in I have a good idea about where to start. We do have a video about how to hitch a fifth wheel so if you want more complete instructions you can see that but you do see that leaving it at that height um, did work like a charm. Okay, we've gotten the electric plugged in. We've got the breakaway on there. And put the tailgate up. Raise the landing gear. Last thing before we get going, we go on and put the tow haul and make sure that it turned on and then ask God's blessing on our trip. And we are out of here. Okay, so we are now in the process of towing and we did make a video about towing, but just some of the highlights, it's gonna take you a lot longer to start and stop. So you need to, if you're coming up to a red light or something, really need to plan ahead. Turns need to be a lot wider so that your back wheels stay on the road. Um, and you're not bouncing all over curbs. Now, sometimes it's unavoidable, but um, just plan on it taking you a little longer, but you're gonna have a lot more fun when you get there. One other thing about towing, um, we do have a separate video, two videos as a matter of fact, about towing in the mountains. We're in Texas, so that's not applicable right now, but um, we did the first one, then we got a tremendous feedback from people and made a second uh, companion video, so if that's something that you need, please go watch that, and uh, always love seeing that, and uh, then um, watch the follow-up, and if you have any suggestions or comments, if you have a lot of experience towing in mountains, leave us some more information so all of us can be as safe as possible out there. Sharon's preparing to back into the site. There are culverts on each side, which is kind of unusual, so it's a tricky back. She did an excellent job. One thing we want to mention, I'm the spotter and she's the backer. If I cannot see her in the mirror, she can't see me and that's a dangerous condition. And if we can, we like to be further on the driver's side because that leaves more room for the awning. But we do have a video on how to back that will talk you through this a little bit more. Uh, and you need to come out with some sort of a system. We have driver side, passenger side, so she can let me know which way to go. But you do need to also be checking where your hookups are as you're backing and where your slide will go. Those are things you need to consider before you stop. Um, first thing you need to do is level left to right. And trying to get all this recorded, we didn't get that part of the video, but you'll notice there's a board there, which means that we needed to, we needed it higher. Sharon likes to back up and then pull onto the board it's easier yeah and so the pass the bubble was on the passenger side so we needed to put the board under the driver's side um, do make sure that you uh, lower your tailgate before you uh, unhitch and and pull away need to put your landing gear down next and I do check to see if it's you're gonna need to level front to back after you're unhitched left to right is before you unhitch front to if you're having to level it yourself and that is no big deal, really. You get very used to it. Uh, unplug your connections. And we do have a video about what to do if your trailer doesn't unhitch. And we've had comments left that this is applicable for bumper pull yes. as well. And so that's something that happens. And we just lived frustrated for a couple of years yes. <laughs> until we figured it out on our own, actually. Um, and so once you've done that, pull your steps down pull out your handle be sure everything's cool on the inside 
while I'm looking at the inside, Sharon is taking care on the outside to check that the, it's locked. And then we uh, go on and we s connect to services. And I have a two-way split there that I use and it comes in so handy. Uh, and also about uh, letting the pressure off whenever you're rolling up your hose. We have a quick tip about that as well. But the regulator I put on this end because uh, I don't turn the water on full blast. But I've left those little plastic faucet splits there and they're cheap. The regulator is a little bit more. And also you want to mention about the uh, connecting to electric. With the electric connection, first we make sure it's off. But it's spring here and wasp are beginning to kind of look for places to nest. There was a wasp. You might want to keep some spray. And then we're ready to let the the slide out. We had plenty of room here, but you want to check when you go inside. This is where I've made numerous mistakes and ruined quite a few <laughs> DVDs by pulling the slide and it was stuck in, the DVD was stuck in between. Stuff does shift when you're driving, so you need to check that. Then you let down your stabilizing jacks. These are not supposed to carry the weight of the trailer. It's just that, like when you have an 85-pound dog walking around at night, you don't feel it quite as much. Those of you who are considering a used RV with a manual awning, don't let the manual awning make you decide against the RV. The actual time this took was 53 seconds, less than a minute to put it up. If it gets windy, you or didn't, if you're leaving, put it down. And then get out there and camp. camp. And we have video. Okay, to be complete with our complete playlist, there are a few things that are going to have to be done, but not necessarily on every yes. trip. For example, the propane tanks will need to be filled. If you have a 20 pound tank that's removable, you can fill it, you can replace it at almost any convenience store, grocery store, it's very, very handy. Yeah. It's easy. Uh, larger tanks, ours are larger than that. We take them out and there's a place we can go and have them filled. There's some RVs where those things are huge and like built in and you're gonna have to find somewhere where you can go ahead that done but we do have a video about uh, how our propane how basic propane yeah. tanks work um, winterizing uh, doesn't have to be done every day but should probably done annually. annually yes unless you live somewhere in the deep south where it doesn't freeze you're gonna need to winterize and once again you can take that in to have it done or it takes us less than 30 minutes yes and uh, save that expense and that's a handy time to go on and flush your hot water heater as of well course. and we do have a video about that and if you need to, to replace the anode rod yes ours is a suburban hot water heater so that's the kind we're looking at which kind of leads us into a um, do-it-yourself list because how much money have we saved um, we called uh, McLean's Camping World here in Fort Worth, well we're not in Fort Worth right this minute, but called them this morning and just asked, what is your hourly rate for service? Talk to the service department. A hundred and eighty nine dollars. Now that's not necessarily per hour. If you take it in and it takes them five minutes to do the job, you get a bargain basement price of $189. And I did ask him, uh, is that the minimum? He said yes. And so we have a do-it-yourself list, uh, playlist. Yes. We don't have a discussion about that, but we do have a playlist. And we, the maintenance that we've done, the maintenance that we're doing, um, we have listed there because each one of those things we've saved at least $200 by doing it ourselves. And with the part, it easily comes $200. Right. Uh, one that's going to be up soon, soon is uh, the city water connection. I'll replace that. The part was $12 and it took 30 minutes, Yes. less than 30 minutes. And when I asked about the part, someone had carried their RV in to have that same part. So I saved $200 over the person that took theirs in. So anyway, anytime you own something, there is going to be some maintenance. It's kind of like you've got to have the oil in your car changed. It's just yes. something that goes along with it. But folks, look at us. If we can do the maintenance, then odds are pretty good. Yeah, you can do the maintenance. Well. About all there is to do now is flush the tanks and head back home. So I think pretty much after we show flushing the tanks, that's going to be 
Cement. That's going to be it because everything else is just kind of a, what we've done here. We're going to be hitching up and doing that whole process you saw earlier. We're going to be towing. We're going to be backing. We're going to be unhitching. So, um, okay. Once you have gone through and gotten everything ready to roll again, as you leave your park, or if you're at a campsite that has full hookups, you can do this at your campsite, but it's time to empty your tanks. Yes. Not nearly as nasty as you should think. <laughs> okay, here we are at the uh, dump station. And so if you've never seen one, this is uh, what the facility looks like. And usually the water is non-potable and they tell you that. Try to get as close to um, even with this as we can. I'm a little bit off, but we're going to call it close enough. Um, you're not actually touching anything, but gloves are still a good, good idea. And you are going to want to get one of these gradiated cones, I don't know what else to call it, connections that go on the sewer hose. The sewer hose does not come with these, but you're going to need this because occasionally you're going to find a sewage receptacle that has a different size. You're not screwing this in, but make sure that it will fit inside of there. I guess if you were doing this living somewhere in your RV, you would. But make sure that it will go inside of that and then um, I always try and pull as, because we don't get full hookups, pull as close as I can so I'm only using 10 foot of that switch hose. By the way, we do have a video about how to do this and we also have a video about how not to do this. Um, and then we have a clear connection. We're not going to show you that as things are going through that just because we're not. But you want that so you can see when it's running clear, and we will show you that. First of all, we're going to pull the black tank. Yes. And let that drain uh, until it basically stops. Close the black tank, and then the we galley... We have a galley and a gray tank. And those essentially are rinsing out that hose because you've been washing dishes, you've been washing yourself... And so that's the start to rinsing the hose. And they can be pulled at the same time. Uh, I usually let one of them drain down a little bit, but yes. unfortunately where our black tank pull is, I have to actually get underneath there. But um, you can then be putting some water, if you have a flush for your... And we do. And we do, for your black tank. Uh, put some water in there, let it get started, and you want to flush that black tank until it runs clear. Yes. And then something you can do to help with your black tank is just put some cheap dishwashing detergent down the toilet. Down the toilet, and that will help break things up, and um, then it will also help to to clean, the black, clean the black tank a little bit. And you also want to, once you've emptied your black tank, go on and put some water in there uh, so that it will have a sloshing area so that whenever things... Solids don't stick. Pyramid, either. <laughs> and that dishwashing detergent kind of helps with that. Sorry, this is kind of a gross thing to talk about, but it is part of life. And as that storybook says, everybody poos. Yes. <laughs> so anyway, um, once you've emptied your tanks and you're heading home, we hope that this video has inspired you. And if it has, then you might check out our RV... Park reviews. Park reviews. We have park reviews of Corps of Engineers, state parks. And we're going to be having, well, we have the, the Hot Springs was yes. a national park. And um, so if you're looking for places to travel, we are not limited to Texas. We have uh, several park reviews that are out of Texas. Yes. But um, hopefully this, is it. this has inspired you, and uh, we appreciate your time. And thanks, thanks for, for watching Two Tired Teachers. teachers.